Welcome to another installment of Friday Q&A. I hope you're all fantastic. As always, thank you all so much for this week's questions. If you would like to ask me anything on your mind, please let me know in the comments below. I do my best to get back to everybody during the week. As always, if you want to support the channel, there is a link to my Patreon. In the video description, there is also a link to some of the music that I make with my band Ragdoll. If you like guitar music, you might like some of what we do. All right, let's get straight into this week's questions. Have I heard the brand new Red Beach album? I had checked out cutting loose because, like so many of us, I had gone and watched Reb's instructional video from back in the day where he plays that, and I thought that sounded really cool. That was definitely the best overall kind of mix on the album anyway, and it was nice to hear uh, what has changed over the years as well. Some of the other stuff was pretty cool as well. I like that song on there, Aurora Borealis, which is just him absolutely showcasing his tapping technique, which was pretty cool. and. Uh, other than that, I haven't given the album a massive listen, but I will probably do that during the week. But yeah, props to Reb for finally doing a, like a really good modern recording of Cutting Loose. I thought it sounded fantastic. Alrighty. Would I recommend a Fractal FM3 if you, you know, you got it in your basket and you're sitting there thinking about buying it? I would say if you've got it in the basket, you're going to do it anyway. Just go ahead and get it. I've been using it live for close to a year now. I used it on the weekend where we played a show at Badlands here in Perth. The show was sold out. It was amazing. And I got to use the FM3 in stereo and it just crushed. It was the loudest gig I've done in a while as well. And I had this like stereo detune doubling thing going on that I hadn't had a chance to really try that loud before. It was phenomenal. I love that thing. So yeah, go and do it. Have I checked out Headfirst Amplification out of Australia? I wasn't even aware of them until the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, maybe they're a brand new company, but I did watch Brett Kingman's video with their kind of Jose style modded Marshall, and it looks really cool. I would love to get my hands on one of those and try it out on the channel and compare it to some of the other amps I've got here, like uh, the old Marshalls and of course the Molecular, which is down at friend of the channel, Troy Nababand studio at the moment. That thing is getting used on some recordings as it should be great amp. But yeah, I would love to check out the head first stuff. All right, this is a good question and I will probably try address this question in a little bit more depth in next week's Lick of the Week video, I'll try and cook something up which helps you practice this. But that transition from doing shreddy stuff, you know, when you're sitting there and you just absolutely How do you get out of that back into like more melodic playing while you're improvising? This is, to me, like, that's the hard thing about all that style of playing. Like you sit there and you put in the work, practicing your picking or your legato or your sweet picking, whatever it is with a metronome. And then you got to actually try and use it in a guitar solo and using it when you're improvising is like another level as well. So I would suggest a few things. I would suggest finding a guitar solo that you really like that combines those two elements. You know, if I was going to think of something, I might say something like Crying in the Rain, John Sykes' solo in that combines so many of my favorite elements of kind of melodic rock guitar with absolute just hell-bent for leather shredding. Of course, any of the Satriani or Vice stuff would be a really good place to look. Uh, there's so many players who do that whole style really, really well. So pick a solo and try to learn it and have a look at how other players put it into effect. That's the first thing. And then you can practice some kind of planned out stuff. I always think about it, it's like, okay, you've got the technique, there's always a few intermediary points between actually being able to improvise with it. I was watching a Tom Quayle video recently where he talks about not being good at picking, which is ridiculous because Tom is a very, very good alternate picker. But then he kind of clarifies that and says when he improvises, he uses his legato technique and he's not as fluent improvising as alternate picking. So the improvising thing, I would wait to get there and I will come up with a lick during the week, which hopefully will incorporate some of those ideas. You could also try practice something I like to call rhythmic grading, where you play a line as say quarters, then quarter note triplets, then eighths. That is going to create rhythmic tension and sound really exciting as well. And maybe you don't have to play as fast the whole time. Ingve does that all the time, you know, something like this. <laughs> Yeah. 
That was sloppy as I clearly need to go and practice that. But that's the idea there. Like I said, I will put up a five minute licks next week uh, where I A, practice that some more and B, maybe write a slightly more interesting line to practice. Would I ever consider going to somewhere like the NAMM show and demoing for an exhibitor. Uh, if I'm able to leave this country at any point in the next five years and uh, assuming all the COVID-19 stuff gets under control, which, hey, fingers, toes, eyes, all that kind of stuff crossed, that's something I would love to do, whether it is, uh, you know, for a guitar company or an amp company or something like that. Uh, yeah, it just looks like in the past, it was a fun hang. And yeah, maybe it'll only kind of be an online thing for the next couple of years or they'll move to a smaller kind of show. I don't know, but uh, it's definitely something I would like to do because I like to talk about gear. I like to play gear and I like to play guitar. It seems like a, like a pretty good fit. The Boss SY1000, have I tried one? Yes, I have several videos with that unit up on my channel, whether it's the overview video that I did whether it is just looking at the instrument modeling or whether it's looking at just the amp modeling. It's a pretty impressive unit. If you're a GK pickup user, it's probably one of those things where, you know, like so much of the Roland stuff and the Boss stuff, there are features that people have been crying out forever, which still haven't been addressed. But it's also kind of the thing that works the best. And, you know, there are some really impressive sounds in there. And I think the instrument modeling is really, really impressive. You should go and check out that video that I did where I basically just put the GK on my guitar. I only used the instrument modeling in the SY and then I used my amps in the Axe FX. I thought that sounded pretty good. And it's the same amp modeling and uh, some of the same effects from the Boss GT1000, which I've got videos with, which also sounds pretty fantastic as well. All right, what color is my Strat that I was playing last week? So that's an Ingve neck and scratch plate on a Warmoth Mary K white body. It is Swamp Ash, it's pretty light, it's really, really nicely balanced. And yeah, that's that iconic Mary K white. There's a few interesting articles you can look up on the internet about how that color came about. It's more like a kind of white violet. It's a beautiful color, I love it. Probably my favorite Strat color. Changing pickups, Whew. this is a big thing. And there is, uh, I don't think there's, really any best practice when it comes to that. If you saw my video about these pickups, I've got Fishman Fluence Classics in this guitar at the moment. Uh, I did a video and then I did a follow up about six months later. And you know, my thing is, if you don't notice your pickups in your guitar, then that's probably a good thing. And it means you do not have to change them. If there's things that you don't like about the pickups kind of purely tonally, then I would say just go and buy a graphic EQ pedal and learn how to use that and, you know, learn how to manage your pre-EQ and your overall pickup setup. But if it's an issue like, you know, you're not getting the dynamics and, you know, the kind of sensitivity out of the pickups, then that's where you need to look at a pickup change. And especially at the moment, because we're in the middle of a pandemic, it is uh, not the most attractive prospect to like go into a guitar store and play a bunch of guitars uh, simply because, you know, a lot of stores either aren't open or they don't have stock or, you know, I can totally understand where people don't want to put their health and well-being at risk doing that. And listening to comparison demos as well is kind of similarly flawed. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, especially on a budget. I would just say that the old Seymour Duncan, JB and jazz combo always kind of works if you like rock music. The jazz is a great neck pickup as well. If you're using actives, then basically any passive pickup is going to be a big world of difference as well. It's a it's a really tough one. One thing that's a little bit cheaper and easier to do would just be experiment with different pots in your guitar. And, uh, you know, the tolerances in pots varies wildly. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff about that that you can go and check out. But yeah, maybe just getting a volume pot or a tone pot with a uh, more suitable taper or changing the cap on your tone pot can have a world of difference on your guitar sound before you go and change pickups. So try that. All right, what is my favorite beach? I would say it's definitely a beach in Western Australia. There's quite a few of them. I uh, really like good old Queens Beach uh, up this way here in the Northern suburbs. There's a beach right near Mindari Marina that I've been doing a bunch of snorkeling 
nearby recently that the reef is just stunning. Medham's Pool as well is fantastic. Anywhere in Marmion Marine Park is basically amazing. I think that goes all the way up to Burns Beach. Burns is great. Uh, like I said, Medham's. Uh, I really like Floria Beach as well. There's uh, just so many amazing beaches. And uh, Bustleton as well. How can you look past good old Busso here in WA? Western Australia has some of the most amazing beaches in the world. Uh, and I say that as somebody who's been right around Australia and been able to travel a lot of the world as well. Uh, it doesn't get much better than good old Western Australia. We're so lucky here. And I do love the beach. And you've probably noticed that because I've been sunburnt in a bunch of videos as well. Alrighty, a cabinet to go with your Soldano. I really like greenbacks with my Hot Rod 50 Plus, but I understand that kind of combo isn't everybody's favorite. If you did like a 50-50 split, either in a 212 or a 412 between V30s and greenbacks, I would say that is kind of nice. Uh, I haven't actually personally tried creambacks. I need to get around to doing that, but a lot of people, I understand, like them because they're kind of in between that V30 greenback thing as well. Uh, if you don't want to try Celestians, of course, you could try, I think the original Soldano cabinets came with eminent speakers or something like that. So uh, the warehouse guitar speakers are really worth checking out as well. I have a Reaper and a Green Beret in one of my cabs and they're really nice. You know, they give you everything a Celestian does. They feel comfortable, but they are voiced just a little bit different uh, for, for something else. So yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit more playing, I think. <laughs> What's that coffee book that's sitting on my amp? It's this one. It's the uh, World Atlas of Coffee by James Hoffman. If you like coffee, you should definitely follow James's YouTube channel. He, he basically is coffee on YouTube. His channel's amazing. Uh, and, you know, I just watch it because James seems like an absolutely glorious dude. But this is a really fantastic book as well. And a, a big shout out to my buddy Ed for giving me this as a gift. I've been wanting to get this for a long time and he sent it to me for Christmas and it is such a wonderful Christmas gift. Uh, it goes through just about everything you can imagine, like all the different kind of methods of brewing. But the really interesting thing is uh, the coffee origin section in there. So it'll go through country by country and talk about the different growing regions. For example, let me read from this book. Uh, this one's Uganda, has a little bit of a history about coffee in the region, has a bunch of maps and cool photos. Feels like a like a textbook you would get uh, in your last year of high school if you were just studying coffee. And then they talk about all the different regions. It's really, really fantastic. And I really like the finish on it. So yeah, that's what's going on with this coffee book. You should buy it. James is amazing. This book is fantastic. And if you want to learn about coffee, his channel is the one to check out. When am I going to do a video with the Eventide H3000? I've been doing all these rack videos and it feels like you know, I'm climbing this mountain of all this incredible gear and it only kind of feels right that eventually I'm going to have to get an H3000 and that will be the absolute summit. And then I'll have to think of a new thing, a new video series to start making some content with. Uh, so yeah, I really do want to check one out. Uh, hopefully it will not be too long, but there's so many other fantastic units out there to check out as well. Whew. But still, the thought of an H3000, you know, it kind of makes me weak at the knees. Uh, what IRs am I using with my FM3 and Axe FX3? They are linked in the video description. Go and get them. They are available in all the different formats. I normally gravitate towards an impulse that I made of a Marshall cabinet, a 1960B with some Marshall vintage 30s in there. Uh, I think that's called LT Brit 412, something or other like that. And there's another one which I made of my Marshall tall vintage cabinet. That is LTTV Mix 2. If you watch my FM3 videos, I use that one all the time. And it's uh, one of my favorite impulse responses. And I think you might like it if you like the sounds I pull here. Studio monitors that won't break the bank. So I'm using the Atom A7Xs. They're not like super, super expensive, but they're also not super, super cheap either. They make a variant called the T7V, I believe. Uh, the other option that uh, I've heard that I really liked are the Samson Resolves, and then you've got Yamaha HS7s and HS8s as well, uh, which are well worth checking out as well. Uh, 
the KRK stuff as well. You know, if you get anything from like, I guess, seven inch speakers or up, you're probably gonna have a pretty good time if you're looking for, you know, just a home setup and it will be a massive improvement over, you know, just kind of computer monitor speakers or something like that. And you'll be able to listen to music and hear it hear mixes in ways you probably have never heard before, which is the really big plus side with all of that. Everything just becomes amazing to listen on or, you know, play your video games through them as well and listen to the amazing sound design in there. That's a whole lot of fun as well. All right, where are we in this q and I can, I can always kill some time and noodle away. <laughs> What do I think of Lindsay Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac? I really like a lot of Lindsay's stuff. If you haven't checked out the live video of him doing the song Big Love, that is just a masterclass. It's so amazing. Uh, I'm not in the right tuning, but you know, he's doing that. Uh, how, I can't do it in drop C. Uh, but yeah, go and check that out. It's pretty phenomenal. I could do it in the wrong key. But he's doing it faster and cleaner and he's singing and just owning it. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And uh, obviously, you know, he played guitar on one of the most recognizable albums of all time in the history of the world. So yeah, Lindsay's pretty good. His lead playing is really, really sweet as well. And I thought he always wrote great parts. And he's a fantastic singer as well and a great songwriter. So yeah, Lindsay is a beast. Speaking about songwriting and stuff like that. What do I like in lyrics? I think this is kind of dependent on mostly the mood I'm in at the time. Sometimes I might listen to, you know, Metallica or Megadeth uh, where they're, you know, singing about the apocalypse or th something like that. And it's, uh, you know, totally aggressive and overblown and in your face. And I love that. And, you know, other times I might want to put on like uh, Talking Heads or I might want to listen to King Crimson Elephant Talk or something like that, uh, where it's, it's kind of like the lyrics that clever for use of a better term or sophisticated uh, or listen to Imogen Heap or something like that. I, I really don't care as long as there's, as long as it makes me feel something. And uh, I feel that way about just kind of music in general. You know, I don't care if you're singing the ABC or the national anthem or, uh, you know, a sci-fi epic that you've made. Um, it's ultimately, I think about something deeper with lyrics and it's about that ability to really you know make an emotional connection with your audience and uh, I guess like impart part of your soul on the listener again we, we're getting into depth here so yeah also I'm super into lyrics that are open to interpretation as well uh, I've had people write to me and ask what particular ragdoll songs are about like and literally literally the same song I've had people write to me about and say hey is this you know, is this a song about, you know, uh, Christianity and uh, how you feel about the afterlife and then other people about the same song who are like, oh, is this song like a total refutation of Christianity and the afterlife and are you this? And uh, it's, it's up to you, you know. Uh, I'm not here to really, you know, I'm here to talk about guitars and that kind of stuff and uh, what I believe in my private life. I don't feel like imposing on people because that's kind of the fun, you know. I already have something in common with everybody watching this video, which is music and the guitar and guitar music and all those glorious things. And uh, rather than look for things to divide people, I'd much rather talk about things that uh, kind of bring people together. So yeah, the lyrics I like to write anyway, aren't necessarily the same as the lyrics I like to listen to. Uh, it's up to you. You listen to them, you feel what you're going to feel. And that to me is as valid as everything else. I, I'm not super into this idea that it's like, no, no, I wrote the song. This is what it's about. Uh, I wrote the song so that you can figure out what you think it's about. That's more my perspective on that whole thing. Got to have some heavy time in here. So let's have some not heavy time. Uh, Tour vans, uh, touring with the boys, what did we use and like space? We can basically get around now in like a sedan thanks to stuff like the FM3 and uh, our Innis rig. It's pretty amazing. The first year we went to the States, I remember we hired this big van and uh, that was a pain in the backside. And then every year since then, we got one of those Dodge Grand Caravans, which are like 
they're just the best car for a three-piece band. If you've got, you know, a big amp and a bass amp and all your merch and all the stuff you need to sleep and a drum kit and everything else that you need when you're basically living out of a van, it's just big enough for three people. And then the last time we were in the States, I just crossed over to using an Axe FX, so, and all our gigs were backlined. So we still had the caravan, but it didn't have much gear in it, just had our merch and guitars and, you know, like I said, little bits and pieces. But it was awesome because you had all that spare space. You could park it backstage before a gig if you wanted some quiet time, after a gig if you wanted some quiet time. You could just go and sit in there, you could turn it on, you could have the aircon on, it was spacious. Uh, you could lay down in the back or something like that and have a nap. And uh, those kind of things really add up when you're just, like I said, living out of a van. So we're lucky being a three piece without a whole bunch of gear necessary where we can take something like the Grand Caravan and it is more than big enough. So yeah, man, so many good memories in those cars. Um, the power amp comparison video, I will try and do that at some point for all the rack gear. I just shot a video with my modified ADA MP1 and did it with two different power amps. And uh, when that comes out to tomorrow, it should be out tomorrow anyway, if I get it uploaded in time, then uh, you can hear you can hear quite a marked difference between the two power amps that I've used there. So if you wanna get some rack preamps and you've got like a DSL 20 or something like that with an effects in, that is gonna be a perfectly fine way to check out your preamps and pull some tones um, that way as well. If you're using, you know, a combo as well, you've already got the speaker in there. So it's one less thing to think about and you've got a rack mount unit and that's a whole bunch of fun. So yeah, I think we're pretty close to the end of this particular Q and A. I'm just kind of doing this and looking over and making sure I don't miss anybody's questions, but we got to talk about the coffee book, but to talk about uh, some shreddage and some gear and life and the universe and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, thank you all so much for the questions. Again, if you got questions for next week, let me know in the comments if it's a question that maybe you don't want out in the open and you don't want people to know that you asked it, you can write to me on Instagram or through my Facebook page. I try to check those a couple of times a week as well if you would like to maintain your privacy. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the video. I'll see you all next time. Stay excellent. <laughs>